that shit. <laughs> she see money all around me. And he shouts me out. That makes me feel so happy. And he drops that shit like at the most perfect time. Like it's the best. Yo, welcome to the Ambition Hour. I'm Audi 3000. Thank God it's Monday. A lot of you guys know that we do premiere these episodes on Saturdays, but this week we recorded it on Monday, and I love Mondays. Yesterday was um, an eventful, amazing day. Got to go see the Black Panther, like such an amazing movie. We're definitely gonna be talking about that, and I'm bringing somebody special along for this episode to kind of have like a little Black Panther um, segment. Very excited for that because the person I got to actually see the movie and has heard the soundtrack, which by the way guys, if you haven't heard the soundtrack to the Black Panther, you really need to listen to it. I'm gonna actually play it for you guys <laughs> because it is just a, such a dope, a, such a dope, oops, such a dope soundtrack. And if you haven't heard it, I highly recommend it. So real quick, I just want to talk to you guys, give you guys a little rundown of what today's episode is going to be about. We're definitely talking about the Drake video that premiered last week that was shot here in Miami. This man just gave away so much money, like a million dollars. We're going to talk a little bit about Valentine's Day because, you know, Valentine's Day just passed. Also, about well, some couples that started popping up. <laughs> um, we're going to get into, like, social media things um, that I noticed that happened during Valentine's Day. Not just during Valentine's Day, but throughout this week. Um, we're definitely going to touch up on the uh, interview that we did with One Way, which has blown my mind ever since it's premiered. It's only been premiered um, for two days, and if I'm not mistaken, we're almost at 100 views. So I really appreciate each and every single person who has tuned in to watch that episode with One Way. Fun ass episode, by the way. Um, the other episodes, we're definitely going to touch up on them. We're going to talk about Renee's that we went, um, the boys performed there. So I was really excited that they got to perform there. The energy was amazing. We're definitely talking about the after the episode of One Way, which I'm really excited about. Because you guys, you guys don't understand, we really lived like rock stars that day. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, we did an interview, a song, which we're actually going to be playing on today's episode. And we performed that night. Well, I say we, I didn't perform that night, but we, like the boys performed that night. I feel like I'm on stage when they perform. <laughs> We're also going to be touching up on next week's guest, special guest, which he is an amazing singer. I'm so excited to have him on the show. And a couple of other things. What I really want to touch upon is this setup that my parents did for my brother and I, which I think is so cute. I had to get it on this week's episode because it like we literally got home from the studio that day after that we did the interview with one way that episode we come home and they have this whole setup just for us and like they called it like our studio and then so we have the mic over here we have like the soundboard in the back we have a little area for the laptop here um we have a big ass speaker <laughs> on this side another speaker and like every time that i walk in here all i want to do is i like, just like I just like see the mic and I just want to perform and sing and Javier caught me like a couple of times, you know, singing the other day, whatever. I always wanted to be a singer <laughs> or a rapper, whichever one. So I really want to talk about this Drake video because every time that I've seen this video, I have cried. Why? Because this man gave away so much money <laughs> during this video. He. He, he went to a school, he donated money there. He went to UM, he gave a girl, I think it was $50,000. He went to a store and he bought everything for everybody. Mind you, it was Abuela, you know, which is kind of... But listen, I mean, we're not here to judge on that. We're just here to like, I, I feel like that's just something that maybe people that are not from Miami, they don't know that. They don't know that Sabor Latino is just like, it's a, it's a regular grocery store. And it's, it's in, a lot of ghettos in Miami, you know, and uh, my all of South Florida actually, it's like a very, it's a, one of the low class grocery stores that we do have here. So for him to have gone there and basically told like, I like abuelitas and abuelitos and, you know, there was a lot of Latin community in that store. And for him to have just been like, you know, everything that you guys are buying today is on me was just beautiful. He took a couple of ladies to Saks Fifth, he got people some cars. Like, where was I? Where were me and Javier were working? 
we did not get that phone call that Drake was out here in Miami giving out money. But um, besides all of that and like giving away the the money that he did, for me, what it what that video just symbolized was that he could have made a video that was super high tech, super the budget was a million dollars in the video if you see it. The budget is a million dollars, and he decides to blow it all on you know charities and schools and you know people with low income and people who are working very hard and everything and for him to take that and to turn it into something that ties it into music and making it a music video was just everything to me and I'm just so grateful for that movie and I'm grateful that we have artists in this in this culture that are doing that not to undermine the other ones because we have so many other artists that do the same thing we have artists that are constantly donating to charities that are constantly you know doing their part but it is also okay to celebrate you know the new ones that do it or the ones that do do a video of it like you can't throw shade because he decided to show it you know what i mean as opposed to other people who they they decide to not show it you know not everybody is straight <laughs> you know drake you know likes to floss a little bit and that's okay so also last week was valentine's day now Valentine's Day, I cannot say that it's one of my favorite, um, you know, holidays and whatnot. But it's a, it's a loving, you know, you you want to show your love and appreciation for the people that you care for and all these things. And I'm all for that. Now it's just funny because social media makes it funny. Social media makes it extra. Social media makes it, and by social media I mainly mean Instagram because that's what I use the most. Um, Facebook not so much, um, Twitter not so much. I'm very into Instagram. From what I saw on Instagram, it was like, who could outdo like presents, or who could outdo what they were giving their girlfriend, or who could like? I saw this one post that this dude gave his girl. I think it was like, like I, I'm gonna make up some number. Like I'm gonna say like fifty thousand flowers, like roses, and it was just all over the room and like just everywhere and it was like overwhelming and I don't know if it's because I've never had like one of those romantic extravagant like lavish Valentine's Day or it's just that it's it's just a regular day for me um it could be either or like who knows because I like I said I've never gotten smitten off of my feet on Valentine's Day to where I see that I'm just like I wonder how I would act if if a dude were to do this for me like I'd be like what are you doing <laughs> or would I be like oh my god I'm like balling where is my camera you know I don't know how I'm going to act that day that that does happen but I also am not too much of a big fan of the holiday either way so it's kind of like eh, you know so I see that as extra um but this girl she had like a whole bunch of flowers and then he had the balloons and then on the shade room they had like what did you do for your bae on Valentine's Day? And this is or that. And it was just so extra. And then I saw a lot of couples that I did not see on February 13th or any day before that. I saw a lot of those. And that was just crazy to me because <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, sir, <laughs> ma'am. Last time I checked, there was no sign of this person that you're posting on your social media. And I'm all here for love. But also at the same time, what is the real purpose behind, behind posting your significant other on social media? Which brings me to my next topic, which is when is it okay or is it okay to post your significant other on social media? Now the reason why I, I ask this question is because of the simple fact that I have 25,000 followers, okay? Shout out to all of you, I love you guys. All my followers, I love you guys. But for a person like me, posting my significant other is something very private. You know what I mean? And so I see that for other people as well. Is it something that's private for people? Or is it something that now is just so normal on social media? And I feel like there's like a balance in between because I do see, you know, couples being posted on Valentine's Day. And I love that there's love. And I was told by a man, <laughs> brother <laughs> that nowadays posting your significant other on social media is almost like a gift so it was like part of the valentine's day gift don't quote any one of us <laughs> on that please disclaimer that's just something that he said and he could be you know it can be true because i can actually 
see that a dude saying, hey, you know, I'm making it official with you, boo. I'm posting you on IG. <laughs> nah. <laughs> you ain't posting me on Valentine's Day. If you didn't post me the other 365 days of the year, do not post me. Well, 364. Do not post me on Valentine's Day, bruh. Um, that's just me, though. Um, but I do think that it's beautiful that all the love is just... <laughs> For clarification, yeah, just clarification, for clarification, that's me. I was just saying that because <laughs> not that it's part of your gift, like, oh, this is my gift to you, but like, all right, bomb, you got the roses, you got this, you got that, you got that. All right, now I'm about to post a picture of you, a little cute ass caption, you know, like, not literally part of the gift, but kind of like low key in there for extra brownie points. That's champagne, that's champagne points. <laughs> I feel, but. See, like him saying that and him making that clarification, not that I didn't know that's what he meant before. Um, not that I'm saying that like, oh. It's for y'all. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? But like, sign off in the comments below. <laughs> what, what, what is it? Yeah, like, what would it be for you? Like, how how important is it for your boot thing to post you on social media? Like, I want to know, like, if I, I mean, if I had a man or if I, you know, like, he's not going on social media. Like, that's me though. You know what I mean? Um, if he wants to post me on his, that's fine. I don't, I'm not like, how dare you post me on social media? Like, I ain't trying to be seen with you. No, you know, if that's my man, that's my man. But that's just something that I noticed. So then I got the boy side, a little bit of the boy side, so I understood that. So then I asked my coworkers, I'm like, hey ladies, so what's up with this deal with posting your significant other on social media? Mainly Instagram, I asked Instagram. And they said, I don't want to post him on social media. And I'm like, okay, cool. So this means that I'm not the only one who feels that way. And one of the girls actually is in a, in a committed relationship. And she's like, I don't post my, you know, I don't post my man on, on Instagram. And the other girl, she was just like, yeah, no, like that's very private to me. That's something that I wouldn't want to share. And I feel it's because a lot of the times once it's on social media, it like takes a whole life of its own and people make their own assumptions. It's just like myself, I post my a lot of my stuff on social media and I get judged on it every single day. You know what I mean? I have 300 plus views on my story. I have 24,000 followers on my on my main page, like on my Instagram. And it's just a lot, you know, and I'm willing to put myself out there and this, but not my relationship, because to me, that's very private, you know, and, but the ones who do it and who are like, con like posting their husband or their, their, you know, their wife, whoever, I love that because it's just like, oh my God, it's love and it's real and I just pray for them and I want the best for them. So it's never not to be bad. It's just my decision, but I do, and I would love to know how you guys feel about posting your significant other on social media. Like, is it a yes, is it a no? Is it like not official until it's on Facebook? Or is it not official until it's on Instagram? I wanna know like, is it something important or is it just something that's just like, hey, if you post me cool, if you don't, like, I don't care. And I, I would just love to know that. So this week I did something different for you guys because I want to be able to do these episodes alone. You know, we do have the special guests that come here. First, let me shout all of those out, guys, out real quick. Dino, shout out to him. You were on my first episode. You are the bomb for that. Yeah. Then we have Kevin Love, who is an amazing person, amazing dad, amazing father figure, performer. Every time I see him, it's just like all love. And then we had um, Spitz, which is my boy who's on here. I am WTW family. And then we had One Way. But we also had another episode where I was by myself and then we're having this one by myself. So I want this, this show to be something where yes, artists can come and showcase their music and go ahead and like come fuck with me and like talk shit with me. I love all of that. But I also love talking shit with damn self. <laughs> and I can talk by myself all day. So we gonna get into these questions. <laughs> we gonna get into these questions that some people, I posted on my Instagram. First of all, let me be the one, the first one to tell y'all that a lot of my followers, <laughs> I love you, but damn, y'all can give me no questions. I got two questions. How I got 25,000 followers and got two questions. You mean to tell me that y'all really, really just following me? Like, and it's all good though. I appreciate the two questions that I got. I'm grateful that I, at least I got two questions. So we're going to get positive on that. Because that, imagine if I wouldn't have had any questions. 
the E. <laughs> and I would have been like, I would have been but her. I would have been like, so Javier, what would be a good question to ask me? <laughs> okay, so the first question is, is it Audi like an Audi, which is the car, or Audi like an Audible? Now I took this two different ways. The username? Um, I think so. It's actually from Mr. Feelgood87. So shout out to Mr. Feelgood87 for Why? actually asking me a fucking question. One way family in the motherfucking building. I see you. He got my back. <laughs> um, okay, so I took this two ways. Audible, Audible I know is also a, um, like a voice recorder type of app. Am I, am I mistaken or is that true? Yeah. yeah. But I also think of it as football because Audible is... A, a football term. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I know that it's two different terms, but Mr. Feelgood, I'm very sorry to inform you that it's neither one of the last two. So it's not the Audible, the app, the music app, and it's also not. Wait, is it Audible? Is that the reading app? That is the reading app. That I think that's what you're thinking app. of. Because he asked the car. It is Audible. Yeah, so Audible is a reading app, not. Okay, so I love the reading app, by the way, but it's not from that. So it is from the car, the Audi. Also, it is from my name. So my name is C L A U D I A, right? So what I did was I literally just took the C L A at the end and I just made Audi. One of the reasons why I did that was I heard somebody with the nickname Audi and I'm like, what the fuck? I like that nickname. I want that nickname. And I noticed that my name had that in there. So I just gave it to myself, like fuck it, you know. And I, that's been my that's been like my own nickname since I was like in middle school. Cause everybody had a nickname, and I'm like, how I do I like not have cool friends to give me a nickname? Like, what's really going on? When I was in California, my fam my family called me Nene, which is um, from my middle name Renee. Yes, my middle name is Renee. <laughs> and so my family would call me Nene because my mom is Claudia. I'm Claudia. I'm a, you know I'm the younger one. Whatever. I couldn't say Renee when I was younger, so I would say Nene. So that just stuck. Um, but yeah, so Audi is the nickname that I gave myself. Where I was just like, fuck it. And then the 3000 came after some work playing, changing Twitter names. My brother asked, my brother was just like, how about Audi 3000? I don't remember how before it was, what I was thinking, but I just remember adding the 3000. And then it's just like, I'm Audi 3000. Peace. Like, it just goes, it flows. Like, you know, rock with it. The next question that I'm going to be answering, I'm going to be answering it on the break. But we're gonna go ahead and go to the very first song. Let's open this bitch up with Black Panther soundtrack. Oh, we're not doing that one yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go into This Is Why We Live by Kevin Love. Now, I've seen this guy perform this song. He came on the show. He showed so much love, you guys. He's on episode two of the Ambition Hour, so make sure you guys go check that out. He does have a new video. Desperate, which also is on his YouTube page. You guys make sure to check out his YouTube page, which is I am Kevin Love, as well as his Instagram, which is I am Kevin Love. And that's L U V, Kevin Love, L U V, not L O V, okay? And then his Instagram, as well as I am Kevin Love. So make sure that you go show love to, on all platforms. Y'all check this dope ass song. This instrumental in this song is so dope. <laughs> Some people think you nothing. Some people think you 
Just contagious. I love him for that song. Okay, so we left off <laughs> with the questions. So we I just answered question one, which was is it Audi like an Audi or Audi like an audible? So I already answered that. So if you didn't check that out, make sure that you go back and check that out because the answer is pretty cool. So the next question it comes from double C one eighty. This is actually, his name is Chris, so I do know him, I've known him, he's followed my journey for a very long time. So for him to ask the question that he asked, it doesn't come as a surprise, even though I am so annoyed <laughs> that he asked that question because it is a very personal question, but I did say that I would answer whatever you guys asked. So the question is, what's something that has happened to you in the past five years that many would consider a failure or disappointment but you found a valuable lesson in it, made you better. And then he said, no BS service level answer either. And he put smiley faces on that bitch. So it was just like, you better answer that shit. He put the sunglasses, the, the crown, cause I'm a queen, and then the little winky face. So he knew what he was doing when he answered, asked me that question. So I'm just gonna read it one more time to myself. So what's something that has happened to you in the past five years that many would consider failure? Okay. So what I would consider, what others would consider a failure of mine would be my herbal life business basically failing. Um, a lot of people would probably see what it is that I'm doing right now that saw the potential that I had in herbal life and would think, what is she doing? Like how, how did she allow, you know, herself to lose her business and for her to just walk away from five years of basically going to trainings, you know, losing the weight, helping a lot of people, being an inspiration, and just giving all of that away. And that to me is what I feel would be a really big failure that others see in my life because it's something that I was just like, I'm letting this go. <laughs> like, I'm letting it go. It's something that gave me so much life and so much so many lessons and I became the woman honestly that I am today because of Herbalife I learned so much about business about myself about nutrition like I'm drinking a shake right now I'm drinking water like my life wasn't like this five years ago so the Herbalife business was something that came to me and gave me so much passion and gave me a reason to live and gave me just everything that I was missing in my life but once it failed, it allowed me to really look at myself in the mirror and reevaluate what it was that I was doing in my life. So with that, I learned a very valuable lesson because I learned that no matter what is in your heart, it's not gonna leave if you keep trying to fight it. I knew that I always wanted to do radio and that I always wanted to be in the music industry, but I was terrified. I was so scared of of people you know judging me of people being like she can't do that she's not made for that i was afraid of so many different things that now thinking about it i i'm like why was i ever thinking those things why was i ever so doubtful of my dreams and my aspirations that i didn't settle for herbalife but herbalife just gave me passion it, it made my heart like just go crazy that's why i can't let go of the products because I'm just so very passionate about them. I love how they make my body feel. And so the, the lesson that I learned was you can't fight what's in your heart. You can't fight against God's plan for you. You cannot go against what it is that 
is in in your cards in your life you just have to go for it no matter what and yeah i did you know you know do a, do an amazing business for five years it, it surrounded me around so many amazing people that i'm so grateful for that each and every single day but the valuable lesson that i learned was that i just had to be myself that i had to trust god that i had to make sure that everything within inside me was okay and was healed before I can actually help other people. So that was one of the biggest lessons I have ever learned in the last five years. And I have I have no idea what other people are thinking. I don't even know if that's really considered a failure to other people, but that's something that I would think is a failure of mine because it is something that I can't say I failed at, but I ended up letting it go. You know what I mean? And when you give up on stuff, it's I guess it's like a it's like a little like a little point on the failure side I guess. <laughs> but it's all good. Like I'm very grateful for everything. I'm grateful for the person that I am today. It would you know having done Herbalife, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. So thank you very much again for that question, Chris. I'm actually very grateful that you asked that question because I was able to actually let that out. I've never said that out loud. It's a question that I've avoided. People ask me very like subtle like oh so you don't do real life anymore and i'm just kind of like nah <laughs> but i love the products i always say that because it's the truth i do but nobody's has ever asked me like that so with that being said we're gonna go into an artist that i fucking love <laughs> which is brent fayaz now i don't know if you guys have ever heard this man sing but he has an amazing voice he is in this song called crew by Gold Link, and it's featuring Gold Link and Brent Fias. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't want to fuck up his name, so I'm gonna I'm gonna look Shy for it. Real quick. What is it? Shy Gleezy. Shy Gleezy, bro. But Gleezy, Gleezy, Gleezy. Okay, all right, cool. Cause you know sometimes I be messing up rappers' names. I'm my bad, guys. Shout out to Flyboy with too many Y's. <laughs> I remember this time. But so this artist just came in with this voice that like blew me away. As soon as I heard him, I'm like, who is this guy? I needed to listen to all of his music. I went on YouTube, I went on iTunes, on Apple Music, and I like looked for his name and basically just went crazy with his music and I love him. Now, something that I noticed is that every time when we walk into Miami Live, maybe not every time, but a couple of times it has been that um, Killer K plays that shit. <laughs> all around me and he shouts me out that makes me feel so happy and he drops that shit like at the most perfect time like it's the best every single time like i love it um if you haven't seen my story like that definitely like i try to post it every single time if i'm not like really 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 happy so i'm gonna take a quick water break shout out to aqua hydrate Ding. <laughs> <Got the> chat. <laughs> by the way if anybody from aqua hydrate is watching sir ma'am we would like to be sponsored <laughs> this shit tastes amazing too okay so brent fias is just amazing by the way he got they got nominated for that song mind you these guys i don't even think gold link has an entire album right i don't even think like he does he does i'm tripping on my bad he does have a full album i'm just more of a brent fan i'm sorry <laughs> but i do um I, I do see these guys as like up and coming artists and for them to have been nominated for a Grammy was, I was like, Brent Fires, listen, <laughs> boy, you have such a talented voice that I'm just like, I'm so obsessed Welcome with Welcome back, everybody. I told you guys I'd be bringing a special guest. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Hop, who's in the building. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> okay, guys, so for those of you that don't know, this is my brother my little brother my little big brother because he's taller than me um and i brought him on this segment because we're going to be talking about black panther we saw that movie yesterday mm -hmm. tell me a little bit of how did you like that movie i thought it was great it was really good at storytelling and the cinematography was great and the score that we were talking about too like it just complimented the, the project that came out with kendrick and the otd family it was really good i loved it and the acting by chad was on point. Michael B. Jordan too. Oh yeah, Michael B. Jordan did a great part. He is he's really from Oakland in the Bay, right? Like he's he, he actually isn't. He's <laughs> at, he's from Santa Santa Ana, 
Santa Ana. Which is oh, okay. um, down south, like LA oh, area, wow. like SoCal area. Cali's Cali. No. Yeah, Cali is Cali. It's all Cali love. But he was actually raised in like New Jersey, Newark. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's he's pretty cool. We're gonna talk a little bit about him later because I do have some awesome fun facts about him because that's big right there. <laughs> I, what I really wanted to talk to you about, um, well, we're just gonna talk about the whole movie. We're just gonna like get into it because he's actually the one who has gotten me into like these superhero action movies. I grew up watching. We grew up watching Batman, mm -hmm. so we did grow up watching that. And you know, movies just like movie in general, like in yeah, like you know, it's just all of those type of movies. I remember mainly Batman, mm -hmm. but <laughs> but something that. Um, that he is, he like loves those type of movies. Like we went to go see Thor. Yeah, Thor right? Ragnarok. Okay, so it, see, I would never remember the second <laughs> part, but I remember the first part, the Thor part. Um, Thor versus Hulk. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but so we watched that movie, and I so that's where I saw the preview for the Black Panther, and I remember being like, "You like, bro, we gotta go see that movie." And I don't like movies like this. So the whole entire time that it was leading up to the fucking movie, I was like, "Bro, I cannot wait until this movie like drops so we can go watch it." And so real quick, <clears throat> so the director of Black Panther, which is Ryan Coogler, he is only 31 years old. He's from Oakland, yep. from the Bay. He's from the Bay. He's from the Bay Area. Bay which Area is, town. Yeah, which, which in the movie, they use Oakland okay. as one of the cities that like, you gotta watch the movie, yeah, but yeah, they yeah. do use that city as like one of the cities in the movie. No which, spoilers here. Yeah, guys. no spoilers so here. Go watch the movie. Listen, you pay. <laughs> I paid my money to go see that shit. I had to find out my damn self. Um, so he had a 900,000 budget for Fruitville Station, right. which Michael B. Jordan is in that movie as well. He had, it made, okay, so he, it, his budget was 900,000. It made 16 million. He had a 40 million budget for Creed, and that made 173 million. That's more than a hundred, more of a hundred dollar profit yeah. that that movie made. That's like a, almost like a hundred and uh, like hundred and thirty million dollars. Oh, like more. Marvel gave him two hundred million for Black Panther, and this is the most ever given to an African American director. Now, if I'm not mistaken, if the movie's gross, like I would say, like twenty two twenty two twenty or something like that. And it's Monday. It's, yeah, two, this two, movie came out Friday. Two hundred and twenty million. 220 million so he's already made 23 million back from what it is that of the movie so to me like let's put aside the fact that he's from Oakland yeah. <laughs> let's be honest because that's a you know that uh, very biased you know, let's, let's put because yeah because of course we're always we're home team we're home teamers like no matter what fuck it we're from the bay so we gonna rep the bay so the fact that he's he's from Oakland that's something he, he he already has one up on him mm -hmm. That he's 31 years old, guys. I'm 28. He's only a couple years older than me, and he's making over million, over a hundred dollar budget. I can't even talk how many numbers it <laughs> fucking is. It's just like blah blah blah. Th this man is 31 years old, and he's doing his he's doing his thing. He's doing it good. He's uh, showing that that focus, that focus that he had, he's been had since the beginning, and it's great. It's great. Uh, movie movie studios. If you want your money back. Get Ryan Coogler to direct exactly. your movie. And, <laughs> That's what it's looking like. What's awesome is that it's he's it's the most that's ever been given to an African American director, and we have some pretty good African American directors oh, like oh, yeah. Spike Lee. There's a there's a couple that we can name on here, mm -hmm. which is for another episode. But we'll be on here forever. But for it that to be the most ever given to an African American director is just is spectacular. I'm like so proud of that um, because I do. I, I do, know. yeah, like, no, I do appreciate the African-American um, culture and what this movie represents. Like, I, we are not African-American, but listen, I felt some type of way just watching that movie. Like, yeah. <laughs> same thing with, like, Wonder Woman, seeing the whole aspect of um, a female protagonist. Oh, yeah. And then with this, and then with this uh, being so African-American. Yeah, and it was just, like, these, because the, the, the warriors of the tribe yeah. were women. So without spoiling anything, the women are basically running this shit, basically. Um, and <laughs> that's not spoiling the damn thing, because y'all knew that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like queens and uh, queens, back, like uplifting kings, like to make them kings, basically. And like they made that, made, they, they set the outline for them. 
Exactly. That's something that I really loved and I appreciated from the movie because I am a woman. So for me, it was just like, hell yeah, the, the women are the ones who are, who are in head of the technology and head of the, the protection of the king and, and ahead of everything. It was just beautiful. I loved that. Because it's, I'm, you know, I'm a woman and it, it's the age that we're coming into, you know, and you were raised by, you know, two women, so you, I know that you feel strongly about that. I love seeing it. <laughs> so, Michael B. Jordan is in this movie, and I saw an interview with him on Angie Martinez, because wow. I love him. <laughs> He's so cute. I made him my wallpaper. Let's see if we can see it real quick. Oh, you can't see because I'm playing the music, but it's all good. He's my wallpaper. It's on Instagram. Um, so I heard that Creed 2 is coming out. Oh yeah. Like it's confirmed. Oh, okay. Did you watch the first one? No, I didn't see the first one. It's actually a really good movie. I heard it's really good. I yeah. definitely is, saw it. Is Ryan Coogler going to direct the second one or no? I'm pretty sure he is. Okay. And you know Ryan Coogler? Well, we're going to be talking about the soundtrack, but Ryan Coogler is the one who basically was talking to Kendrick about doing the soundtrack for the movie. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, yeah, we gonna talk about that. <laughs> so we'll, let's put a little pin on that bitch real quick. We gonna come back to him a little bit. And so Michael B. Jordan, I love him. So he's he plays the villain, but he likes to call himself as the antagonist. Yes. Yeah, right? Yeah. He's just like, I'm, I don't like to say villain. I like yeah, to say cause antagonist. It, cause, yeah, I mean, that's the like movie way to say it. Though, <laughs> but, but, um, <laughs> But yeah, I guess it sounds better the protagonist because it's just you know, it's so opposite, you know. And that's also the other thing that this movie does great is showing the the compare you could compare and contrast, you know, Michael B. Jordan's character with the with Chad's character. Yeah, and just the layout of what happens and everything that happens. You guys just have to watch this movie. Like, I cannot stress that enough. Like, get your friends, get everybody. Listen, go back and play a damn self and watch that shit. Um, they might have to cut the check. They got that money too. <laughs> I'll buy them by here. <laughs> um, but so yeah, so Creed 2 is coming out. Oh, okay. So I just told you this, which is that um, Michael B. Jordan is actually in Hardball, which is oh, his, yeah, one of his yeah. favorite movies. That's one of my favorite movies growing up. Yeah, I yeah, love that movie. I didn't know he was in that. Yeah, how did you feel knowing that he was in that? Like, then, it was almost like, how did I, how didn't I know? And like, I always knew there was something about that Michael B. Jordan game. <laughs> you just look so familiar. Like, I've, yeah, I've seen no, this guy before. Yeah, it's, it, exactly like that. And But it, yeah, it just like, kind of changed the movie. It makes me want to go see uh, Hardball again. Right. He's, so. If you guys have never seen Hardball, or if you have, he's G Baby's brother, yeah, his older brother. brother. He's the one with the, the afro. He's also in The Wire. He's also in The End. But he's in a lot of different movies. And so I definitely watched that, that, <laughs> that interview that he did with Angie Martinez because. You know, imagine if I had to interview a fine ass man like that. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> I need to know how to like, you know, well, what if I gotta interview him? Listen, you can never be too ready. So <laughs> on the ambition hour. <laughs> on the ambition hour, <laughs> seriously. Okay, so we're gonna take the pin out because Michael B. Jordan did mention that Ryan Coogler and Kendrick Lamar were talking about doing a project together. And it wasn't until the Black Panther that they were able to. You've heard the soundtrack, right? Yes. How, talk to me about that shit. I feel Kendrick did his, like he put a stank on all the songs, even if he's not on all the songs. Yeah. It just feels like it's from him and just in, in a different way though. Like all the artists kept their originality and, and their, but he just like really, like really executive producing this project was like such a big move. I've been a fan of Kendrick Lamar since like 2010 and stuff like that. And I've been to a couple of shows I'm up in, in here. So like, uh, so yeah, it was just really cool to see that, like him orchestrate that, I guess, and to see like, why he really got to flex that muscle, which we all know that he had, but he never, but it wasn't like a chance to. So it was just amazing. I feel like knowing that it was executive produced by Kendrick Lamar, and just in the movies, because you know how they use the transition, like there's songs in transition. Mm -hmm. And when I do listen to the soundtrack, I hear it now. Like, I'm like, oh my God, I, I always picture a certain thing in my head. And it might not necessarily be the song, but I remember hearing, because I didn't hear the soundtrack until after the movie. Because I wanted to see the movie first, and I wanted to, like, I don't want to be in the movie yeah. like, oh, this is my shit. Yeah. <laughs> 
So into the song. You, you, you added the movie yeah, into like the I'm song. Yeah, like I added the movie into the song, and I'm like, man, that's my shit. And then like I'm embarrassing like myself and shit because I am the one to do that. Um, but just to, let, let's name a couple of artists that are on this soundtrack. We got Two Chains, Schoolboy Q. Um, Zerk was on there as you well. You were way better than me because I was definitely um, looking. <laughs> Yeah, who else is on we there? got Zakari, we Zikari? have Absol, we oh, have um, J Rock, Future's on there. I love me some Future. We have Vince Staples from, yeah, which is from the West Coast. SZA is on this album. We have Sway Lee, Khalid. We have, Khalid and SZA are are very new um, up and coming artists, but they were both nominated for Grammys. Yeah. So it's no surprise that they're actually on this soundtrack because why not? Especially if Kendrick is the one selecting these people, exactly. you know what I mean? We got Georgia Smith. Which, we just heard that song, that song was playing a little while ago, yes. and that song was amazing. Oh my god, that song is so dope. I love Georgia Smith. Um, she, if you guys do not know, you might have seen the name because she's in the album with Drake. Uh, the one that's a playlist. What's the name of that shit? Oh, uh, More Life? More Life. Yes, she's actually in that, in that album as well. So that that's just dope that he has so many like up and coming artists, but then he also has some legends in there because yeah. he does have future. He does, he does have you know just so, Chains, he has Mozzie. Chains, he has the weekend. Uh, the weekend. Mozzie's from the co the West Coast, Coast too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He killed that. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, for sure. He definitely did. Like it's amazing. Okay, so we Oakland. We talk. Okay, so we definitely got to t touch up on you know the Black Panther, which is really what. I wanted to bring you on here because you know my boy be up on his movies. <laughs> his to movies. movies. So I'm very excited that you came on. But I do know that you just shot a video for Go. Yeah. Yeah, it's out now. It's out now on YouTube. You can check that out. Go, we shot it, you know, obviously in Miami and a little bit in the Wynwood area too, in front of the American Airlines Arena. It's just been such a swag since we did Dwayne Wade is back in town so um, but yeah we, sh we shot that video it's also available on SoundCloud and um I you know we all we edit our own videos mm -hmm. we shoot them ourselves you know it's really by us for you so hopefully you guys just check it out let me know what you guys like and you know put your favorite bars like in the bottom or whatever part you feel that you know you ever felt about a person you know or something like that yeah, and I actually want to talk, talk, talk about this with you because I know you mentioned to me that this is one of your newest songs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's one of the newer, well, like, one of the newer songs that I wrote uh, recently, I guess. Like, the most recent ones that are the, the ones that I've been releasing, like, Post and Players and some things. Like, this one's a little bit more, more recently. And I feel like it just shows a little bit more growth, and hopefully you guys can hear it, too. And of course, you guys are going to hear a little bit more when we get into to Burgundy, which we've been working on and getting that finally out there to you. <laughs> like, I know all of the songs. Um, so tell me about what inspired Go. What inspired Go was basically um, was just like seeing the good in any situation. You know, like you know, it might hurt or you know, things might happen or anything like that. But hey, you, you know, just go. If you don't want to be here, you know, I ain't trying to keep you. You know what I mean? Like I ain't trying to. Uh, hold you against your will type type shit so like it, it's really more about that like and just letting go and also letting go of fear like you kind of touched up on earlier you know just you know you could just go and just get out of here and uh, a lot of bars came from um, you know a personal place and mm -hmm. something that I think a lot of us have all felt and all dealt with so I hope I hope that you relate to it and it helps you yeah so with that I feel like you should announce this shit yeah so go man right here on the ambition now you better go check this thing out it's, Ha, go on WTW Radio and TV. You heard, you did. This is the Ambition Hour.
was the one you needed Late night creeping Took you to four seasons For you to see all seasons Never satisfied with a nice calm evening Going on the deep end Late night drinking Out here player Now that I became a slayer Young dark fader My mindset's major Never been a minor Always hit vagina or get it from behind her Late night grinder I'ma need a night show I'ma need the lights low I'ma need a free coat With some loyalty though Always got good we roll Always keep it clean though Always by my side though Always down to ride yo Down, down to body yo Hit me with the Addy though A drop of penis in that location Need to see you now my heart racing You deserve that bracelet You deserve that necklace I know it's hard to say this Oh, it's hard to see you go I ain't worried about it so So you could go, just go You could go, just go It's hard to see you go But I'm not worried about it so So you could go, just go You could go, just go Oh Oh, it's fuck a bitch though Now my heart broken, I became a real sicko Now I'm seeing views as I came from the six though You supposed to be by my side, through thick and thin though Wasn't the one you needed, I was the one you creeped with The one you fell asleep with, and now you the one I'm be with Was in my fairy tale, now you in my nightmare Scary to see that you would end up right there And now you acting like you don't even care Gave you my heart and you couldn't even share I'm the one that you need not to sound conceited, the only one you needed Queen is how I treated, never thought you'd leave me Never thought you'd play me, and I'm no one saying Drop a pin and send that location Need to see you, now my heart racing You deserve that bracelet, you deserve that necklace Oh, it's hard to see you go I ain't worried about it, so So you could go, just go you could go, just go It's hard to see you go But I'm not worried about it, so So you could go, just go You could go, just go oh. Be the pimp side Got a sofa full of dollar bills I ain't never been enticed on what's not real Five senses I'm aiming for what your heart feels They be lying like a car deal Plug me in for the pound cause I need to smoke I, I, I should hand you the rope for talking shit Like I'm not the Pope, I ain't the folk Welcome back everybody That was Go by Hive And we actually have Hive in the studio yeah. For the first time in our ambition I'm excited about well, he's not behind the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was one, that's what I wanted to talk about. That's what I wanted to talk about. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here on the Ambition Hour. I'm always here and always making sure that the vibe is right. And um, all the artists that have been here before me and going to be after me, definitely it's dope to meet y'all and get you guys in this uh, setting to on um, WTW Radio and all that. Yeah, I'm very grateful for you um, because you, you are the one behind the camera. You're, you are the one who's recording, making sure that everything is okay and some of the times you're editing other things and it, it takes a lot to actually do this ourselves we don't really show it neither him and or, or i and sometimes we kind of like Ugh, on each other but at the same time we know exactly what our mission is and we know exactly what it is that we want to give you guys so we do it ourselves and <laughs> We, yeah. you know, we're, we're learning as we go, which I'm very grateful that, you know, you want that shit with me. <laughs> yeah. And we said fuck the middleman. Yeah, fuck all that shit. Like, we got each other. That's all we need. So let's get right into Nipsey. This Nipsey oh, album. Oh, yeah. Speaking about fuck the middleman. <laughs> um, Nipsey also definitely did his thing on this Victory Lap album. 
that was I mean we heard it and yeah, it was heard it on Friday when it came out. It was sick, full with like these beats and just his bars and his delivery and the topics. I love it how he talks his shit. Like he owns his own masters and that's something that is very like important. At least to uh, someone like me or doing what I want to do with uh, my record label or working with records and like just seeing him getting his victory lap, you know, it's been a marathon and it's been a grind and uh, for sure. He has a very unique voice and I appreciate what he's done for hip hop because he's from the West Coast. He he shows love. Like I feel like he's so respected in the industry Yeah. and it's I guess because some people for, tend to forget what he's done. It's kind of just like, Ooh, yeah, like, it's like Ooh, what? Yeah. <laughs> this guy's been the man for the last seven years. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like, what you mean? Yeah, exactly. So I'm very, I, I love the album. I heard, um, I haven't heard it again because I'm really stuck on the Black Panther soundtrack. <laughs> like, I'm not even gonna lie, but I know he likes it, and I and I do like it. I have heard it. Yeah. My plan is actually to listen to the Nipsey album more <laughs> than the black my my original plan was to listen to the black panther album like for the first time on here and like kind of like do a reaction but i couldn't get away from it after i heard redemption which is by sakari I, oh, yeah. uh it's by sakari and babs wadumo i haven't looked him up about babes wadumo but from what i hear his shit is, it sounds amazing his voice sounds amazing and he's not american because he's definitely talking another language when he's singing <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is awesome. That's that pretty shit. freaking cool. Yeah, so yeah. I love that. I, that's one of my favorite songs. So as soon as I heard that song and the song that he has with Future, like I was, that was, I was it. Well, you heard the the dedication one with Kendrick. What you thought? The about that one? the Nipsey. Oh, the Nipsey. Yeah, yeah, no, the, Nipsey. the songs that I did hear in Nipsey's album were pretty dope because we listened to a majority of the album, if I'm not mistaken, on the way. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah I'm on, the way. on the way to Renee is when when they before they performed, we listened to it a little bit and like I loved it. So I'm. We'll get to it. We will. I'll be up on the next <laughs> um, So the All Star Weekend was this past weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to that. Unfortunately, we didn't really get to watch it. Yeah, we watched it. We watched a little bit of the end. I saw a bunch of highlights and LBJ, uh, well, OB, OBJ's story on it which on was Instagram, funny as fuck. which was hilarious. They didn't get that man's show, but. Um, but <laughs> but I thought it was really cool. Like when you thought about the whole, like instead of the West and East, it was like Stephen's team and the Bronx. I was kind of thrown off because I woke up from a nap, a little base nap, right before the like. I woke up and then when I turned the TV on, I'm like, oh shit, all right, cool. What's that? What's up? We got the we got the East, we got the West, and then I I just saw I'm still half asleep. Then I realized I see that it says Team Steph and Team LeBron because I asked somebody, I'm like, oh, who are you going for? And they're like, Team LeBron. I'm like. Oh, why is it Team LeBron? And then I got it. I'm like, oh, because really, it's Team LeBron and Team Stephen. So I'm like, well, I'm definitely Team Stephen because that's you know his that's Bay Area. Like, and plus, I don't ever want to talk about how how I feel about LeBron James on this show. That's for another podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's for another podcast. I don't want to talk about him on this show. But um, I yeah. So I was definitely Team Stephen, and I love that they did that. Something that was horrible that I heard and is the fucking national anthem. Yeah, you know everybody was was clowning Fergie, but then like, I like, and then some people were saying, hey, it's original. She put her own little twist to it. You know, people, you know, are scared to take chances, and she took a chance. So then I'm like, I'm like caught in the between because then I heard it again, and I was like, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, that's just something horrible to <laughs> And you know, Instagram has no chill. The internet has no chill. You fuck up, next day it's all over. Black China, no. <laughs> and so, and so, and so well, yeah, like that shit is crazy. Some, some shit uh, happened this weekend. Yeah. So, but yeah, so um, as far as, as that goes with... Um, yeah, I thought that was cool too that they did that. And I thought I gave it like just a... Like a new little spice. Like yeah, a, yeah, it was kind of like, like oh. they were the captains of the team. Yeah, and they, yeah. Was like, did they get to pick their own players? I think, or? yeah, they had like a little draft thing. Like, they, they, they had okay, but players, I guess because the fans do select the, the players that do. Well, I think, and then they made a pool. Like, okay, these are the ones that are available. Because Adam Silver was talking about next year they should like live stream or like record, record the draft for the next one. I think that would be pretty cool. I think if that's the way that the NBA is going to take it, instead of doing like an East Coast West Coast type of battle thing. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty cool. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, let's take let's take away that two best players be the captains, and I think it'll just make the game like more competitive type of thing. You know, yeah. you know, the West is 
the best. I'm sorry. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, one of the things that I liked was that Kevin Durant was on LeBron's team. Oh, yeah. I liked it that, like, that all the fuck off, yeah, the, And then, like, even Russell and Kyrie were on that team, too. So, like, yeah, and it's you just, know, like, the four of them. And, and all of them being so, so big fans of each other. You yeah, know? the thing is, is that at the end of the day, they're all basketball players. Exactly. You know, at the end of the day, it's a game. You're going to win some. You're going to lose some. You're going to lose rings. You're going to, you know what I mean? Because somebody's going to win. And that somebody may not always necessarily be you. And they're all grown men, and they can, you know, go ahead and accept that. So something that we didn't want to talk to you guys about is appreciation. Yep. Thank you so much. We have a couple more new subscribers and new people who are in the family. And I just want to take this time out to thank everyone. And anyone that has left a comment or liked, hit the like button for any of our videos in the Ambition Hour or our videos, me or, me or Spitz's videos. We appreciate it. And hopefully you guys get to continue on and stick with us as we improve, as we get better. And we need more of your input. Like, you know, we got these two questions. We definitely appreciate it. We want more questions to come in for the Ambition Hour. And we want, you know, just more feedback. Like, what do you guys want us to do? What do you want to see? And stuff like that. And I just want to say thank you to Hop for being on today's episode. Like I said earlier, like, it's the first time that we actually have him on the show. He's usually in the back. You guys hear him every once in a while. I usually talk to him because he's always with me. So, I ain't somebody talking sometimes. I can always talk about sales, which I'll. Um, and I'm just very grateful to have had him. I do want to touch upon the interview that I did with One Way. I did learn a lot about them. I learned about Overtown. I learned, um, I just learned so much from each and every single one of them that like my heart is so full with the amount of abundance that God has blessed me with to be able to interview a group of individuals that are like that are like them. Like, you can tell that they've been through certain things in their life, whether it be breakups with exes, baby mama drama, um, you know, having kids at a young age, just, you know, being from the streets. Like, I know people from the streets and I have, like, I'm, I'm not from the street, I'm not from the hood, like, straight up, but I, I did grow up around that culture. And to see men like them go from something like that, like come from a city that that is over town, which I'm, I never thought of it as what other people say it is. I just thought of it as another city in Miami. Turns out that it's a it's a pretty bad city, but these men never showed that to me. They showed me so much respect. They showed me so much love and laughter. If you have not checked that episode out, it's I. Don't think I'd ever laughed in, in another episode. Maybe the one with Jarrell, I would say. Um, for, especially from a group of individuals that I just met. Like, I met these guys this year. So I'm very grateful for them. You guys have to make sure you guys check out that episode as well as the other episodes that we have. The episode with Dino was my very first episode. Like, I cannot thank him enough for coming on this show and just being able to talk hip hop with me and to be himself with me and to laugh as well. And, you know, just be, you know, just be himself as well as Kevin Love and Spit. Next week we have a really good artist, which I am so excited about, which is Trees. Now Trees is such, he has such an amazing voice. Like I'm obsessed with this dude. <laughs> like he just shot a video for his single called Lead Me On, which I'm very excited about because it's one of one of the songs that I like by him. I just, anytime I hear a song that I really like it. So I'm very excited to have Trees on this episode. We're actually gonna be having I'm gonna be announcing the special guest after Trees. I'm gonna be announcing him next week, so I'm very excited. You guys need to make sure that you guys tune into that episode so you not you guys know who the special guest is. The special guest is like royalty. <laughs> like he he's he's like he's a little head one in charge. So I'm very excited to have him. Something on that the I show. wanted to talk about was after the interview with One Way. After the interview with One Way, my brother had a session. He decided to make it a WTW Records one-way session. And they already had a song together, which is called United We Stand. Now, I had heard my brother's verse and I heard the beat. That's it. So hearing it come together with Mr. Feelgood, with, with Flyboy, with Spitz, with Weed, and with my brother, like all, like bro, there was that, that that's five people in a song. Two, three, yeah, that's five dudes in a song. And each and every single one of them went in that booth, did probably like one or two takes, killed that shit. And it was just like one after the other. Like, I know and I remember that I was starving to death 
but when I tell you that this experience, it like, I don't even care, like, there's not even something that I'm like, oh my god, I was in the studio that time and I was so hungry, no, I was in the studio that time and even though I was hungry as fuck, had a headache, had just filmed an entire hour interview, I was able to witness greatness, I was able to witness men from different cultures, make a song together and that to me was everything that's what i do this for that's what i why i tell these artists to follow their dreams is because with your voice you're able to bring unity you're able to bring people from different cultures different sizes different backgrounds different whatever just because we're all from miami doesn't necessarily mean that we come from the same things just because we're all hispanic doesn't mean we all necessarily come from the same thing just because we're African American, on and on we can go all day. It doesn't mean that we come from the same thing. So when you put those type of personalities and those type of backgrounds and just make music and then for it to come out so beautifully, like to have seen them perform it and to have seen them recorded it, to me was something amazing. So it was only right to end this episode with You Let We Stand by One Way and the W2W Boy with Pound and Spitz. I just want to thank all of you guys again for watching this episode. It's episode six. I never in a million years would think that I would be saying that. I'm very grateful for the questions that people ask. I'm very grateful for Hop coming on the show. I'm very um, pleased with the the you know the answers and the responses that I got from some of my friends that helped me with some of the questions that I did have. But I didn't want to see what was going on out there in social media. Um, so with that, all of that being said, I'm very grateful. Thank you again for tuning in. This is United We Stand by One Way, Hop and Spitz. This is the Ambition Hour and I'm Addy. 2000! Alright. I just did this too. Alright. Yeah. It's only one way. WT Dub, G to G. We got Flyboy in here. I see you, we. Dex, Pooh, Hob, Audi 3K, Spitz, what's good? Track Kings, Complex, yeah. Uh, it's only one way and worth the wait. Unified as revenues and high stakes. Suing ties, business minds like give me mine. The industry looking gourmet, it's dinner time. Running the game like it's track and field. Punch lines leave you beat down like Emmett Till. Ring bells like firemen, you know the drill. Been chasing that money back, check the paper trail. They say this ain't a race, this is a marathon. So I'm gassed up like Chevron. Back to back, black on black with my entourage. Knocking door to door, connecting like a landlord. Yeah, I'm back like I never left. Fuck your ref, talk foul, get hit with the tech. Got shooters on deck, shooters on collect. Since shooters at your necks, they taking off your neck. Like, yeah, I know what you like, yeah. I know what you like, yeah. I know what you like, yeah. I'ma clear another bong. Writing wrongs in my songs. I never trip about a bra. How to switch up, I don't call. Oh, oh. I know you think it all. Oh, oh, oh. It's dirty dub above all. Oh, oh, oh. One way, no star. Oh, oh. G2G, we gon' ball. Oh, oh. So tell me how it's looking, bitch. You know me, how I be. Back on my money, shit. Grizzly in my city, but bitch, you belly this. She gon' swallow, and I'ma sip on Chris. Flurry with the vision, yeah, it's from the sipping. When I'm on the mic, I'm Jordan, pimping. Smooth flow, I'm winning 2 0. But sometimes on the beach, you gotta go cool, Joe. I just want the, I just want the love to be spread. My brother be fair, roof above the head. This world is a jungle, so my mother be scared. Thank God that I'm here, cause the others sleep dead. It's one way, and worth the wait on the track now. With G2G killing snares in the background. I choke the beat while Harv give it pat downs. 
Did fly boy punch bars, turn it Since I was a boy, I knew that I would be the man. Blowing on this loud, making noise like we the band. You know you can call if you ever need a hand. Cause divided we could fall, but united we could stand. And now with all my niggas and we fly like Peter Pan. Bitch, we got the game wrapped up, we the saran. I might let you see the plans, but you know it's worth the wait. I'm married to the money, but it doesn't hurt the date. The day we fall off, it's the day the earth to break. All my niggas eating, we can serve you up the plate. Tell us, slurp it like a shake. You know she need a protein. There's one way worth the wait, nigga, we the protein. Huh? If this rap game was Egypt and pop was Pharaoh, I'm the region, I deserve it. Ain't my flow so thorough? Therefore, hail to the newborn king in this hour. And that foe, that's some badge of imperial power. Bring lyrical showers, devour. When the rains the pour, them niggas was up for a shot shit. Change the score, I taint this whore. I guess I'm a pimp in this. And I don't like to brag or boast, but I'm a Christmas gift. Unwrap your wish to bliss. How you feeling like I? And I'm feeling like God when he was feeling the sky. I'm killing this guy, some hate it. I'm prepared for collision. And I can see these wolf teeth in my peripheral vision. I flare with precision. One man got these niggas emerging. Thought they had the game locked, but I caused a diversion. It caused a diversion. It brought a lot of instigators. They premature, so I put them in an incubator. They distant haters. Never seem so long. See 